I do do is bring a lot of guys in, like obviously Ollie Ollerton came in, you know, obviously I'm now part of the Breakport team, which is great. And like Ben Williams, who wrote Commander Mindset, and those guys talk about their military experiences in Afghanistan and stuff. But a big thing I try and teach my guys is that the reason why the military structure works so well and the discipline behind it is because you're training to operate under high pressure. Now, high pressure isn't necessarily getting shot at. High pressure in normal life is like, I've got a lot of lads who run really big companies, like really big companies. They're under a lot of fucking pressure. I've got a lot of guys who've got three kids. They're under a, probably a lot more pressure. Oh, like, tell me about it. I've, yeah, I've just had a second. I know exactly what that feels. You know, and, and, and when you've got all this stuff going on and, and also at the same time, you're trying to take care of yourself and your own health and fitness. That's what I'm trying to train guys to sort of have that um, mindset about is that, you know, it's like going to war. Like every time you, you, every time you're trying to get the kids ready for school, or every time you're trying to get the kids like just breakfast sorted, like that is like a little mini battle. So mm. I always talk about it as if it's like that. Like you can take exactly like you said the the structures and the disciplines and the um, methodology from training for war, training for those type of environments into civilian life. And, and what that really does is you operate on a higher standard than anybody else. Because you just you just work in a different manner. Um, but yeah, mate, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Well, I had um, a mental health practitioner on last podcast, uh, Paul Regan, great guy, fantastic oh, wow. uh, conversation, yeah. and he talked about sort of the nervous system and its responses to stress. Yeah. And he was saying that your body doesn't know the difference, say, from being shot at to compared to the stresses and pressures of everyday life. You may know because it's different, but your body, in terms of its response to the stress, is exactly the same. Um, 100%. Yeah. Stimulus is stimulus. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter where it's coming from. It's, it's a stimulus. Like so, I think that's the thing. Like if you're, if if because we deal with we deal with shit every day. Like we mm. deal with crap every day. Like all of us do. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do. Like you can be a multimillionaire running a huge business which is probably actually a lot more stressful than people think and it's probably not as actually good as you, you would imagine or you can be like um you know anyone else you can be a normal person you can be anyone else like right and, and you're always going to deal with all this stuff and what's a great you know a big thing that a lot of guys don't really think about and don't really realize is when there is no outlet for that stress you are just storing it so a lot of my guys like what does happen and like you you mentioned is that like when they're not training in any sort of capacity at all and they're not having any physical endorphin release or they're not really, you know, getting sort of a positive energy out there, they're just storing stress and stress and stress and stress. And then no wonder, you, like you say, six months, 12 months, you know, a period down the line, they end up something going really, really wrong because it does it does cause that effect to it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's massive, isn't it? It's massive. I've just okay. realised there's an alarm going off in the background. Can you hear that, Terry? Or no, if not, don't worry. I can't it. hear it. It's all good. No worries. It's, we'll was it, it your car it. alarm? <laughs> no, it's um, Google. So like my uh, Becca sets like alarms on Google. Um, it's to remind you it's about it's... this podcast, is it? Yeah, probably. It probably. I don't know. It might, <laughs> Did, like, you turn turn it off, so Did you want to turn uh, it off? Did you want to turn it off? Uh, I got a point here because we were talking about purpose and responsibility and that uh, it reminded me of something. And I think it came from, it, again, Jordan Peterson. I listen to a lot of his stuff. Very, very good guy. If you don't, if people, listeners aren't aware of him, go and listen to his stuff. Um, but one question and he talks about is people ask, uh, why do you do drugs? Right. Why do you do? And there is a point. I, again, I'm going with this. Why do you do drugs? And he says, that's not the question you should be asking. The question is, why don't you do drugs? Yeah. And it, I mean, it's not just drugs. We can apply this to eating junk food or drinking or just or general anything. not doing anything, laziness, play. And it's like, why don't you do that? And the reason is because you have responsibilities. It's because you have a family to look after. It's because you have bills to pay. Um, and what, and this is the thing, when people lose that meaning or focus in their lives, that's when they will go and do drugs because it's or, or, or you know or heavily junk food or drinking whatever it is because there's nothing stopping them do it because there's nothing to aim for this this higher purpose that is when people can easily slip into those things so it just stresses the importance of having a goal and something to aim for in life well the biggest thing i think is like imagine okay imagine if i an easy way to sort of describe it imagine like with yourself or just with anybody imagine like if you were going to work and you got there and your boss just went just do whatever the fuck you want just do whatever you want there's no schedule there's no set direction of where we're trying to get you to finish or go 
um during the day just just do whatever the fuck you want like you know turn up whenever you want like um yeah at, take lunch break whenever you want like if you want to fucking wear absolutely no clothes and come in naked do what you want like, and, and 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 imagine that's my kind of job mate you might well you imagine that type of office though would that office be productive and get anything done like realistically if they had no goal they had no set standard of work i know people are going to go oh yeah but google and this that, and the other it's like yeah they still have a standard of what they need to do like would anything actually get done if they had no purpose and it's like the realistic reality is it might but a not in a focused capacity and and actually not in a manner that would work and b it might not be productive so that does happen when a lot of guys like you say they don't have responsibilities they don't have an actual structure to follow or necessarily any accountability to have to do that it can then be like you say a a purpose of like just do anything so therefore that is what they do Mm. and there's no fulfillment yeah yeah there's no fulfillment slides into a a completely different manner and then actually there we go i can pause this on my phone um and then what actually then happens is that ultimately like it it it, it becomes norm like we all know right so like uh, the slip the steps to fuck hell this is going to be deep the (laughs) steps to becoming a drug addict aren't done with like right you're a perfectly working normal man um and then next minute you're on heroin and you're on the street like it's not it's not like it might be quite quick in the sense of like to get there but it's not like oh it just went it's little chunks of things that happen so it's little things that sort of like trickle away and i'm not saying everybody's going to get to that point like just because you have a couple of beers every night doesn't mean you're going to get to that point like i don't i don't you know i'm not saying that what i'm saying though is that it it, it just becomes this sort of normality then it? it sort of just trickles down mm. and that's kind of what i feel like happens with a lot of guys either way like it, it, it's either like they take the the little tiny steps where it ends up going wrong and it just becomes a custom over time. Or actually what I say to a lot of my guys is like the opposite of that, like a resilient, positive, you know, mental health, um, you know, in, in a good manner, like a positive mindset isn't built by one single individual act. It's built, like you said, over taking layers off that fear, taking layers off that limiting belief. Like Ant Middleton talks about it quite a lot in his podcast, like taking layers off each individual thing will get you to that point but that has to be done over time like mm. a lot of guys just like in the gym right people people get into the gym and they think i'm gonna get fucking shredded overnight and like you know i'm gonna have a six pack and this that, and the other and it's like well realistically that's not how it's gonna work you're not just gonna go for a couple of weeks sort of semi you know go as like go 24 7 for seven weeks oh, sorry um a couple of weeks and that be it it's done over time it's like built into it it's accustomed into it and i think like that's just that's just the the biggest thing i try to teach my guys from the off like this isn't just something we want to focus on like my program now is a a minimum commitment of six months and it's the aim is actually ultimately 365 so a full year now a lot of people might think fucking hell that's quite a long time but realistically like if we if you live into 100 slash 80 like that is if if you say 100 that is one percent of your life one percent of your life and potentially if you are going to live to 100 and it's 1% of your life at the middle of it or at the quarter of it, which majority of the lads are probably about there, I've got a couple of guys who are in their 60s, then actually if it changes the direction of the other 50%, then it's probably worth doing. But anyway, the, the long and short of that, what I'm trying to get at is that once you immerse yourself in that process and realize that it isn't just going to be a quick fix or it isn't done overnight, and it is actually something you have to gradually take layers off, that will be the direction towards positivity. But that happens either way, Terry, doesn't it? Like it can happen where you've got two examples, like a couple of beers every night, that 1%, like John Peters talks about it, doesn't he? Like that 1% downfall, you mm. don't get there overnight. And actually the 1% up is also done the other, either way. Like you don't become a beast over one meal and you don't become as fit as you poss- possibly can after one workout. But it's, um, it's yeah, that's the thing. Cause we were saying it's an ex- exponential decline uh, with yeah. the bad stuff, but it's also an exponential increase um, if you're doing yeah. the positive stuff and it doesn't have to be groundbreaking it can just be small steps one percent that's all you're aiming for just improve yourself one percent every day and you, you'll be miles from where you started uh, at the end of it what's happening people if you enjoyed that clip then you can check out the full episode by clicking here and don't forget to subscribe